Well, let's get going, ladies and gentlemen, my first guest. Oh, this is exciting. Uh, she's uh, in also from Los Angeles, Cornelius. She's uh, here on a book tour, and uh, she's written her first book, which is just marvelous. Here it is, right here. It's called The Lady from the Black Lagoon, and we're going to learn all about the, the person responsible for creating the creature from the Black Lagoon. Uh, she's an author now and a producer. Please welcome Mallory O'Meara. <laughs> Certainly pick one. Is this if you a want. Muppet tarot deck? Uh, this is a <laughs> Philadelphia themed uh, Close uh, enough. Uh, thing designed by James Boyle. This one, though, uh, has the Philly fanatic on it. He's the fool uh, there. So, very specific to that. Anyhow, Mallory, how are you? Overwhelmed and excited. How are you? Yeah, I noticed you took the second seat. <laughs> I, well, this, I mean, the, the microphone was sitting on this first, one. First time that's happened. Okay, I'm we'll get into it. I gotta get, I gotta get okay, use that for your hand. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> All right, good. Well, I'm glad you're here. Now, uh, tell us about Millicent Patrick, who is the person that, uh, the subject of your book. Who was she, and why don't we know more about her? So, Millicent Patrick is the designer of the creature from the Black Lagoon. She's the only woman who ever designed a universal classic monster. And the reason why we don't know more about her is that when Creature from the Black Lagoon came out, they, Universal decided to send her on a press tour to promote the movie. Yep. But her boss at the Universal Monster Shop, a man named Bud Westmore, was so jealous of the attention that she was getting of her own creation that he fired her, blacklisted her, and by the time she got back on the tour, she had, from the tour, she had no job, and no one knew what happened to her for decades. No one even knew if she was alive. Until you came along. Yes. And there are a lot of parallels to your own life, which is why you were drawn to the character? Yes. I'm I mean, a, to the subject, the person? Yes. I'm a huge monster nerd, and when I was 17 years old and saw Creature from the Black Lagoon for the first time, I did it like all nerds do, and I went online to look at pictures of behind-the-scenes stuff and how the monster was made, and I saw this woman working on the monster suit, and it was the first time I'd ever seen a woman working behind the scenes on a monster movie, and she became my hero. Yeah. And you even have a tattoo of, of I Millicent. do. This yeah. is... It's there not the go. most convenient spot for a tattoo, but I was running out of room at the time, so. <laughs> That's her with the creature. That's her. With a creature arm. Yes. Well, it's a in kind creature of. Creature is, oh, I have to look all the way around. Okay. It's not the most convenient yes. spot. Yes. <laughs> I see. If I, I see. could do it all over again, I'd get it somewhere better, but. Well, okay. Running out of room. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll inspire other people to get them. I, fingers crossed. Although yeah. this. Uh, the book cover features her and the creature arm. It, yes. We were thinking about having the tattoo art, but I wanted to keep it for myself because I don't want anyone else to get this tattoo. So. I get it. I get it. Tattoos are magical, aren't they? This one was. Yeah. I rec if you want to write a book about anything, just get a tattoo of it. It's uh, really uh, worked out for me. Is that how, how it happened? Yeah, actually. Oh. The people who made it happen are in the back of the room right now. Two literary agents who yeah. said, hey, uh, that sounds like a great idea for a book. You should write it. Yeah. That's amazing. And, uh, but it is odd that somebody would find so many points of connection with the subject, isn't it? Was that at all spooky for you? Did you ever feel like you're being a little haunted by uh, Millicent's ghost? Funny you say that. There's actually some really weird coincidences that I did not put in the book because I didn't think that people would believe me. Yeah. Uh, the day I got this tattoo, I didn't even realize it, but it was her 100th birthday. Her 100th birthday. Mm -hmm. The day you got the tattoo. And the day the book came out, completely unintentionally, was this exact 65th anniversary of Creature from the Black Lagoon coming out. Wow, look at that. Isn't that something? How the cosmos talks to us <laughs> through time and space. Cosmos Amazing. likes monsters. It does. Well, I like the monster. I recently went back and watched the Creature from the Black Lagoon. It holds up. It holds up. It's an efficient little picture. And uh, one of the things I like about it, you know, you look at some of these creatures, okay, out there in the movie, uh, I thought you meant maybe in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we'll get to them in a minute. But uh, no, you look at some of the, the, the creatures in movie, uh, fand uh, moviedom, and uh, some of them you think, uh, not so much, right? Nosferatu, I'm not inviting him over you for supper. You don't like Nosferatu? Well, I don't feel a kinship with him, is what I'm saying. I appreciate his role. Maybe but you clip your nails too much. It could, it could be that. I do like to keep things trim. Uh, <laughs> thank you for noticing. Uh, but no, but the creature, I, I have a sense of uh, empathy for. I feel I feel uh, kind of a he, hey there, lonely fella. What what's going on with you? You know, that's Millicent's work, isn't it? To yes, create that kind of. I think that's what makes a good movie monster. Yes. Well, they William, William Allen, who 
was the producer of the movie. He basically wanted a wet King Kong. He a wanted wet a, King Kong. Yes, Think great about elevator that pitch for creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, but wet he really King wanted Kong. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he wanted a Beauty and the Beast story, and he yeah. wanted something that I mean, the creature is not the bad guy of Creature from the Black Lagoon. Something that really is heightened in Guillermo del Toro's Shape of Water. Yeah. But he's just hanging out in his lagoon. He's yeah. not the villain. And Millis and Patrick's design of the creature really helps with that because he has so much humanity in him. He's not just a scary monster. You feel you feel bad for him. You do. You, and it's a love story, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, looking past the whole like taking a woman forcibly back to your cave and wanting to start a half gill man, half yeah, not the best family. Kind of line. Not great. Okay, but still, you feel for them. It's you, you want them to end up together, and that's what Shape of Water did. did yes, it. in a big way. Yeah, and people have kind of sex feelings about that fish, right? People do have sex feelings about that yeah. fish. Yeah. Uh, I get some of them in my signing lines, which is really interesting. I've become like the confess, the fish sex confessional because of this book. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any monster crushes? Uh, well, I'm a Wolfman girl. Yeah. I'm crazy about the Wolfman, all werewolves. That's my dream is to see a female design, female directed werewolf movie that is like a female werewolf. Yeah. But I'm, I mean, I don't like to tell the creature this, but I'm, I belong to the Wolfman. No, yeah. Oh, any wolf uh, aficionados out there? Wolf people? Yeah. Oh, that's the right. That's the right response. A howl is the right way to do it. Oh, there's kind of a low rumble. Is that a monster? Yeah. Is that us? That is a. Sounds like a wet King Kong. <laughs> Taking a swim. <laughs> I don't like wet ghosts. I, w I don't like when the monsters, okay, when it appears and it's a child, like in a thunderstorm, and they're just like suddenly there by you in the That's bedroom. That's extremely specific. You have really bad memories. <laughs> it is, and I do. <laughs> and I do not like when the ghost is dripping. I do not like that. Because that tells me it's a little bit real. You know what I mean? Wait, on, on you? Or just on the floor. Just on the floor. If I see a puddle, then something. Okay, we've crossed. How can you tell if it's a ghost puddle or a real puddle? Oh. You gotta touch it. I'm not gonna touch the ghost puddle. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it, Mallory. No way. No matter how much you encourage me, I'm not gonna do it. Well, I like the film. I like to watch it because at one point, um, uh, the, the scientist K, the yes. main lady there. Female scientist. Female Rest scientist. Rest in peace, Julie Adams. Yes, yeah, she just died recently, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, at one point, she just she's smoking a cigarette and she flicks it into the lagoon. <laughs> this pristine lagoon that they've just found. Well, they it, don't know what's pristine. in there. It is the black lagoon. Flicks the old cigarette. That's science for you right there, yeah, isn't yeah. it? It was 1954. <laughs> Who cares? Cigarette butts. <laughs> this was back when they thought cigarettes were good for you. That's right. Probably will help the uh, ecosystem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have a little bit of unfiltered. Uh, tobacco. <laughs> yeah. They also poisoned the thing at one point just to try. Yeah, to with rip. roof and all. Yep. That also seems like a great idea. You know, it's the Black Lagoon. It's it's filled with cigarettes anyway. I think you might as well. <laughs> all right. It seems remarkably clear yeah. when you watch it. You're like, oh, there's the, I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, so and then the other thing I liked about it. Oh, it was a time, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Do you remember this when you could just go swimming in a pair of trunks? And have a knife on your waist. And the good old it. days. That was it. I long for those days of my youth. Just pulling up to a swimming hole and diving in with my knife. Yeah, an ancient, untouched black lagoon That's where you right. could just swim around untouched with a massive knife on your thigh. And it's, and it, and it's in the Amazon, supposedly, though I think yeah. it was probably filmed in Florida. Uh, but it was supposed to be in the Amazon. Now yes. listen, if I'm swimming in the Amazon, my first thought, piranhas. That's right. But the creature's gonna eat them all. Creature helps you out. You don't He's know that now. You. you don't know that. Now you know that, but then you didn't know it. You're jumping in there. It's an Amazon pond. You don't know what's gonna happen. I'm worried about piranhas. Did you see the movie Piranhas? That's why you have the knife. For a piranha, they swarm you. They, they strip the cow. Be fast. Sick. I don't know. I don't think that I would be uh, the right candidate to go in <laughs> and take care of a That's why you can't carry knives around school anymore. of uh, piranhas. <laughs> I wouldn't. I, that would not be my role. In the, I would be okay on the boat, maybe. You'd be the cigarette flicker. Well, I don't know about that, but I, I would. I'm, I'm not good on boats, so maybe I would just be like back this at the like command center. This sounds like a nightmare for you. It's wet. There's boats. It's not, good. it's not good. I don't like the film. Natalie. I don't care for it. This sounds like you're. We just need a brings child. Brings up a lot of issues for me. Brings up a lot of issues. It's true. Are you okay? I was okay, but I was forced to, to watch it because of your book. You can do what I do and take your glasses off, so that way no one knows that you can't see what's on the screen, but you can see. 
no one who. You need the other the people with me? <laughs> watch you watch it, it alone? Off. You can watch horror movies alone? Are you crazy? <laughs> you know what I like to do? Watch it with the sound off. Watch it with the cat. Then it's not, watch it with a cat? Yeah. No, that's not, that's not a good recipe for me. But, uh, See, are you scared of cats too? Oh, uh, yes. No, well, no, uh, no, just a little allergic to them, that's all. Oh. That's all right, it's okay, it's okay. I went over to a dance rehearsal at Audrey, she had a cat, I was deathly uh, allergic to it, but I, I went through it, I did okay, I'm okay, I'm all right now, it's okay. Um, but you have a lot of cats, right? Too many. Cats. Yeah, like 25 or something. I have above the legal limit in Los Angeles. <laughs> oh, that's not good. <laughs> Hopefully, there's no cops in the audience. Do they just make? They just breed? They just replicate when you're there? They're not. I mean, do you acquire them or do they like, just grow? Yeah, no. <laughs> you know what they're I'm trying like to say? They're not like splitting in two and making more cats. That's they're all I mean. neutered. Like the they're all trash tribbles. cats. Yeah. Okay. It's, trash my, cats. it's my motley horde of garbage cats. Okay. Right. Why would you buy a cat when you can find one in the garbage for free? <laughs> Sound advice. <laughs> Adopt, don't shop. <laughs> uh, okay. And, uh, but uh, Millicent, though, you're the subject of the book. She was also an animator at Disney. She, she was worked one of on the first female animators at Disney. Worked on Fantasia. She did. The movie, not the singer. Yeah. Yep. And uh, did, the, did the big demon in that, or something? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Oh, my, uh, my favorite animated monster. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Chernabog. Chernabog. He's Chernabog, a, yes. He's based off a Slavic deity. Of course she is. Yeah. <laughs> All the best ones are. <laughs> uh, and so, and the book is going well. So far, I'm so here, far, aren't I? So far, you're here, and you're, you're going to be uh, you're going to be signing some books tomorrow. Is yeah, that it? Yeah, tomorrow night I'm at Books Are Magic in Brooklyn with uh, author Maria Devana Headley, and we're going to be talking about women and monsters and signing books. That's terrific. And the thing is, you realize when you read this book that there must be uh, hundreds, if not thousands, more women out there who were part of pushing culture forward. Absolutely. And, and remain invisible, uh, hopefully not much longer, thanks to your work and others, uh, and that uh, will continue uh, to, to reveal all these great creators that are out there. Working on it. Yeah, that's terrific. Well, the book, again, ladies and gentlemen, here it is, The Lady from the Black Lagoon. Uh, I encourage you to go out and get it and uh, read it. It's a great, great story. I appreciate you watching Creature, even though it really scared you. It really scared me, Mallory. I'm still I scared. I really appreciate it. Well, you can hug the book. I'm going to hug the book for the rest of my life. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mallory O'Meara.